it's actually a bookish realm and I am back with another video as you can see from the title of this video it's audiobooking 101 so on Monday I asked if you all wanted to see some audiobook recommendations and an overwhelming amount of you said yes so we are making this video happen we may or may not have a special guest here um, she's down here eating her Cheerios so she may or may not interject in this video but we welcome her interjections <laughs> all right y'all so i just wanted to break this video up into a couple of different parts the first part of answering the time old question whether audiobooks count as reading i want to talk a little bit about the resources that i use go into some technical aspects of audiobook listening and how i incorporate it into my daily routine and then i'm going to close out with about 15 recommendations so for the first question do audiobooks count as reading of course they do i can't believe we're still having this debate i can't believe that this is still a question audiobooks are a great resource for everyone they are particularly helpful for those who have reading disabilities or visual impairments or it could be a socioeconomic thing where people only have access to audiobooks and that is the way that they are able to read overall audiobooks are just super engaging and I think it's just a new way to interact with the text and coming from the perspective of a librarian audiobooks are really really great for kids they are a way for reluctant readers to pick up the habit of reading sometimes reluctant readers are more engaged with listening to audiobooks and actually picking up the text they are a way to build critical reading skills and develop new vocabulary skills they get rid of the stigma that sometimes is associated with kids who are not reading on grade level so by listening to an audiobook they don't have to feel ashamed by not picking up the same books as their peers and they're just fun and they're entertaining for the entire family it's a great way to bring the family together especially on things like road trips I can't tell you how many times I've interacted with families who are like we want an audiobook to listen to when we make a drive from this place to this place and there are great audiobooks out there that are great for family listens so yes they do count as reading now in terms of resources i use several resources there are several resources out there that i don't use i know that there is audible and there is scribd i don't use either of these subscription services it's just not within my budget right now to use both of those subscription services when i use i think like two other subscription services right now for books so i don't have those but i use a lot of the services that my library offers and there's two in particular that I use for my library and that is Overdrive slash Libby and Hoopla. So I've seen quite a few people who create this distinction between Overdrive and Libby. Overdrive and Libby are the same company. They are the same resource. They're not two distinct resources. What ended up happening is that Overdrive on iOS and Android devices was horrible it wasn't user friendly a lot of people had trouble with it so overdrive developed the app libby in order to create an easier interface they are essentially the same thing overdrive looks better on a computer than it does on like an ios device or an android and libby is just more accessible and more user friendly now hoopla is completely different Ooh. from overdrive slash libby as a service hoopla kind of works as like a streaming service so your library allots a certain amount of checkouts that you can have per month and that's solely based on budget and they pay per checkout so if they say like okay hoopla is going to charge us 298 per checkout per patron then they will work out within their budget thanks for the cheerio baby they will work out in their budget how much they are willing to allow each patron to check out and for my library system we have a pretty decent budget so i can check out up to 10 things on hoopla per month and a lot of those checkouts usually work within my audiobook listening i also use it for graphic novels and comics but i do check out audiobooks from it as well and it would be an excellent resource so if i were you i definitely would check with your local library and see when you get your library card if they offer services like libby 
slash overdrive and hoopla and i would use those as a way to listen to audiobooks remember that with libby and overdrive it does work on a basis of who has the item currently checked out so with libby and overdrive you may find for newer titles the wait time is going to be a little bit longer than if you are using hoopla but hoopla gives you less checkouts than libby slash overdrive another resource that i end up using is libro fm and i use libro fm because i am part of their librarian advance listening copy program so every month i get a certain number of choices or selections of new audiobooks new releases and i can download all of them if i want i don't because i know i'm not going to listen to every single one but there are ones that i can just download and listen to and they don't even ask me for a review necessarily but i do try to push and promote their services on social media because they have a great program going on where they have this partnership with independent bookstores so independent bookstores do get part of that money to go towards their company and that's really really great they have really really great selections like this month i was able to get access to mexican gothic i got access to this is my america i got access to the voting booth so it's great to get access to a lot of these things and i have so many more that i want to listen to using that service so i definitely would check them out i do have a referral code if you want to use it where you can get a month free just to kind of see what they're like i know that there are other resources out there where you can listen to especially like classics for free um and i don't particularly listen to classics for free because i like to read classics on the page because sometimes the language is a little bit more difficult sometimes i will use the book and the audio and follow along together but for the most part i don't but i will link some of those resources down below i also know that there are people who independently do audiobooks on youtube i haven't really checked those out but just know that those are also a resource as well okay so now for some of the technical stuff how do i get through audiobooks so quickly so i think i talked about this a little bit in my how to read more video where i talked about the fact that i listen to audiobooks at a higher speed so typically i start off listening to audiobooks at 1.25 speed just naturally because that's what i'm comfortable with that's a way for me to get used to the narrator's voice get used to the characters get used to the storyline if it's a reread i could off the bat probably start on 2.0 but if it's a new book to me i start off on 1.25 and then i increase the speed and after that what ends up happening is that once i get comfortable i'm able to push it all the way up to in between 1.75 to 2.0 speed i know that a lot of people have said that they've had issues following along with audiobooks because they start to get distracted and they can't focus my recommendation and what I've seen a lot of other people recommend is that you should probably start listening at first on a higher speed like I would probably say anywhere between 1.25 and 1.5 what's probably happening is that they're reading too slow meaning that that's not even your normal reading speed when you sit down and read a physical book so I would try speeding it up to see if that will engage you more and maybe that will help you listen it could also be the audiobook that you're listening to some audiobooks are just not good every audiobook in the world is not good sometimes the narrator is not good sometimes it's just easy to just read the physical book or an ebook copy it solely depends so you may have to play around with that a little bit another technical resource that I would like to provide is attempting to incorporate audiobooks into your everyday routine so I think a lot of times people kind of stay with listening to audiobooks while they're in their car I would recommend listening to audiobooks whenever you have any type of free time and you can put earbuds or headphones on or you can listen to it out loud so like if you're cleaning or if you're doing laundry or if you're doing dishes listen to an audiobook then if you're going out in public especially now during the pandemic no one wants to really talk to each other because no one wants to breathe on each other use that time to listen to your audiobook while you're doing grocery shopping or you're doing regular shopping or whatever you may be doing utilize your free time to listen to audiobooks when you can't physically sit down and read a book i would also recommend if you can have your audiobooks on multiple devices so i have the libby app on my phone but i also have overdrive on my kindle fire and i also listen to audiobooks on my laptop so there's never a reason for me not to be listening to audiobooks at some point during the day okay and so here we are the part that everybody's probably been waiting for it is the audiobook recommendations i think i have about 15 or 16 there's a variety in genre author um 
grade I don't want to say I want to say grade level because it's a habit but like whether it's young adult and middle grade adult or whatever children's there's and there's actually one comic book that's included in this because I find it really really oh. interesting so we're gonna go ahead and get started please understand that this is not a complete like list list I have listened to I think up until this point like maybe 142 143 audiobooks so mm -hmm. This is not a definitive list. There are a lot more, but these are 15 that I know that I really, really enjoyed. I think it's 15 or 16. Y'all count. I don't, I don't know. I just picked ones that I enjoyed. Okay, so the first one that I'm going to recommend is Solo by Kwame Alexander. This is one that I talked about, I believe, in June. And I really, really recommend this because it is read by Kwame Alexander, but this book centers around a main character that is a musician, and there are actual full length musical pieces written within the text so what Kwame Alexander ends up doing is actually singing those parts and some of the music is really really good and I had never experienced an audiobook like that before and I was like you know what I really want to listen to more audiobooks like this because incorporating like the author singing music that they actually wrote which is completely fascinating. And just a quick plug right here, y'all. I'm not going to go into in-depth descriptions of what these books are or what they're about necessarily because of the fact that this video would end up being too long. I'm really just going to give you the title of the book, the narrator or narrators and then why I enjoyed the audiobook. The next one that I have on my list of, is Game of Thrones, which I think oh. is no surprise to anyone because I think a lot of people have enjoyed Game of Thrones um, as an audiobook. But this is an example of listening to an audiobook to help you get through these chunky books, especially those that are high fantasy. This one was narrated by Roy Dotrice. Dotrice? I'm probably saying his name wrong, but he narrated all of the Game of Thrones books and he also was a part of the series at some point i think i still haven't watched the series i think i've only seen season one and i've only seen season one because i read book one but i didn't want to watch the rest of the seasons until i read the books but i don't think george r, r. martin is going to write the rest of the books anytime soon but i really did like his voice and this is a book that is written in multiple perspectives he does such a good job with changing the voices of each perspective that we get that he has you fully immersed in the story and you never get lost in figuring out who is who which is a very very big deal for me i don't like listening to books that are multiple perspectives where there's not multiple narrators and the voices end up blending together that's a pet peeve of mine but this was done really really well the next recommendation that i have is anything that elizabeth acevedo narrates clearly a lot of people love elizabeth acevedo they love her narrations i am no different from anybody else she narrates all of her books she also narrated pride by eb saboy i think one thing that attracted me to elizabeth acevedo just her narration is any book that she has that is written in verse which is the poet x and clap when you land it's almost read as if it is slam poetry so it ends up being really really engaging you feel like you're sitting in front of her and she's performing for you so it's so enthralling and I loved her narration of pride because she just brought this vibe to it that made it just a more enjoyable read even though it wasn't one of my favorites but she just brings a different feeling to all the books that she reads the next recommendation that I have is lovely war and this was narrated by Jane and whistle John Lee Dion Graham Nathaniel Parker Steve West Fiona Hardingham and Alan Koderner yeah. or Koduner. I'm horrible at pronouncing names as you can see yeah. and I absolutely love this book specifically because I listened to it on audio this is a book that is told in multiple perspectives because it includes perspectives from the gods and goddesses Greek gods and goddesses and it centers around four characters during World War one and kind of drifts a little bit into World War two it also has a musical element so an important part of this book was the arts and music in particular and there was music that was specifically composed 
for this book. Now it wasn't like solo in the sense that you had the author performing the music. It was just classical pieces, jazz pieces that were specifically written for the book and I thought it was really really well done and the fact that it was narrated by so many people, it was a full cast for every single character, made the book feel like you were sitting down and watching a movie. And I have not listened to a historical fiction novel that made me feel that way and this one just hit the spot. The next book that I would like to recommend is a middle grade book and it is Masterminds by Gordon Corman. Gordon Corman is just a great middle grade author. I love a lot of his stuff and I actually read this entire trilogy on audio because it was a I think three people narrated this. Yes it's three people. It was Ramon D. Ocampo, Kelly Jean Badgley and Tara Consoli and this book is about these kids that live in this perfect society where everybody gets along everything is perfect but they don't realize that they live in that type of society and then one day one of the kids tries to leave and then when he tries to leave he gets this weird sickness and then you figure out that there's this whole weird science fiction thing going on and I don't want to say much because it'll ruin the book but this trilogy was really good and I recommend listening to it on audio because the voices are so distinct and they bring so much light to each one of the characters. I had fun reading it and it is definitely one of my top middle grade series. The next one that I would like to recommend is also middle grade and it is the Watsons Go to Birmingham and it is narrated by the one and only LeVar Burton and it was so good. So I listened to this back when I was still listening to books on CD <laughs> like that was my audiobook listening but what is so great about the Watsons Go to Birmingham is it is an example of audiobooks that have this humor to them that you may not get if you were just reading the text. So the audiobook narrator actually brings this flair and fire to it where they make the dialogue extremely hilarious which may not have been so apparent if you were just reading the book. I loved it. I remember distinctly driving in my car especially going to work and listening to this book on CD and dying laughing because it was so funny. What I did like about this one too is that the transition between each one of the chapters was a jazz kind of piece which was it was cool it was just a cool audiobook it was just fun I definitely this is one that I would recommend listening to with your family the next one that I have is read at the bone by Jacqueline Woodson and this is one that I just recently listened to and it is narrated by Jacqueline Woodson herself Quincy Tyler Bernstein Pete Francis James Shauna Small and Bonnie Turpin. I think that this one is a great example of good narration for family sagas. If you want to listen to an intergenerational story that has multiple narrators, I definitely would recommend this one. It made the audiobook experience really enjoyable. I still think this is one that you may have to listen to a couple times because Jacqueline Woodson is just that complex of a writer. But I think that this is the best one that I've listened to as far as like an intergenerational story on audio because there were multiple narrators. And I think the only one that I've listened, there's two others, I'm lying, that I've listened to on audiobook that were intergenerational and that was Homecom Homegoing by Yaa Jesse and Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. And those on audio were not as good and they were kind of the similar vibe of that generational or intergenerational story. But they didn't do the same thing that Reddit the Bone did for me. The next two are ones that I recommend because the author narrates them and it is a good example of when it's important for an author to narrate their own book and that is A Long Way Down and For Everyone by Jason Reynolds. For Everyone is his nonfiction poem in which he talks about goals and aspirations and it was a very important poem to him because he had some interesting things happen to him as far as being a writer and becoming published and how that process changed him in a lot of ways and that he's successful now but it didn't always start off that way so I think that when it's like personal stories it's always great for the author to narrate but then he also narrated his book Long Way Down which was written in verse and I loved that in the author note he talks about it was important to him not only to narrate it because it was written in poetry 
but also because of the fact of the topic that he was discussing in that book which is about how youth are treated and especially when we talk about like youth incarceration which is a topic that's extremely important to him and he felt like he couldn't trust anyone else to narrate that book for him and I completely agree with him. I think that it wouldn't have come across as well without him having narrated it because you can tell the passion and the energy that he feels for these kids that are judged especially when we talk about this cycle of violence and how it affects our kids and it was just super important for him to narrate that book even though it was a fiction book and you wouldn't think about that that correlation of why it's important I think that's a good example of why the next one that I would like to recommend is the Naughty Princess Club and this is a trilogy and it's narrated by CJ Bloom I think it's just kind of similar to the situation with the Watson's Go in Birmingham where this narrator was full-blown capable of making these books hilarious especially the fact that these are told from the perspectives of women who were supposed to emulate Disney princesses Cinderella Belle and Ariel and their sense of humor is dry but it's just it's there and there are parts of these books that are funny especially Ariel's book and CJ Bloom does an excellent job of bringing these characters to life and making the text humorous and I literally binged all three books not because of the fact that they were the best written books on earth but because the narrator was just that engaging and made me laugh and it just were feel good books for me in the moment when I wasn't really having feel good moments in reality. The next one that I would like to recommend is a, another middle grade and this is Nooks and Crannies by Jessica Lawson. This is a mystery book about a girl named Tabitha who essentially is invited to this weird mansion with other kids to meet this lady and they don't know why. I have a thing for English narrators. I don't know why that is. And this narrator, Susie Riddle, does an excellent job. And I thought that she made the story super dynamic. I think she added to the mysterious elements. She brought Tabitha's character to life because Tabitha is quirky. She's strange. She's different from the other kids. But I think that Susie made her relatable. She made her fun. She made her engaging. And I literally, this is the one time I think that I actually went out to figure out what other books Susie had narrated because I enjoyed her narration that much. The next one that I have here is actually a comic book series and it is Lock and Key. So believe it or not there is a audio adaptation of Lock and Key and it is narrated by Tatiana Maslani, Haley Joe Osman, Kate Mulgrew and then there's a host of special guests. I have actually listened to part of it and I need to go back and finish listening to it but this was really fun to follow along with while going through and looking at the artwork and they actually had sounds like sounds that were like if a door was opening closing like you would hear that like stuff like that was really really cool and it was the first time that I had listened to an audiobook that had sound effects incorporated into it and I found it to be particularly interesting. I think some things were added to make the narration make a little bit more sense since this is a comic book series but I would recommend listening to it that way instead of watching that crap adaptation that Netflix did. This wouldn't be an audiobook recommendations video if I did not include The Diviners by Lippa Bray. This whole series is narrated by January Lavoie who I think everyone is pretty familiar with because she does such an excellent job with the Diviner series. I think that this is a series where somebody's playing peekaboo with me right now. <laughs> I think this is an excellent series where we see that the narrator is capable of narrating multiple perspectives with a full cast and you don't realize that it's just one narrator. <laughs> So January Lavoie is so gifted that she can read multiple parts and you will feel like you are reading a book with a full cast and it's just one person. Say hey! Now while I haven't listened to other books by January Lavoie, I have listened to most of this series on audiobook. I absolutely have loved that experience because she's made the experience so dynamic and interesting and thoughtful and she's just an amazing narrator and I think a lot of people will agree with that if you've ever listened to the series on audio. The next one I have is 
front desk which is written by Kelly Yang and it was narrated by Sunny. I love this one because once again I had a narrator who was actually narrating multiple parts but it didn't sound like she was narrating multiple parts and she made the story really really engaging and really good and she brought a lot of emotion to the characters especially when this dealt with such a difficult topic like undocumented immigrants and racism and classism so it was a it, I won't say it was a difficult book but it was a book that covered hard topics and I love that Sunny Lou was able to create this atmosphere where the reader was able to really connect with the characters and feel the things that they were feeling emotionally especially when they were experiencing these levels of discrimination. The next one that I have is uh, nonfiction and I wanted to preface both of these by saying that I know a lot of people say they like to listen to audiobooks especially ones that are nonfiction or ones that are audio autobiographies because the author nine times out of ten is going to read the book. I would like to say that when you have those not every <laughs> not every nonfiction memoir has a good audiobook <laughs> because the author may be a good writer but that doesn't mean that they're a good audiobook narrator I just DNF one this month I think it was Child of the Dream I DNF that one and it was a nonfiction memoir and it was horrible not like the memoir was horrible but the audiobook was really really bad because the author just was not not a good narrator but these two in particular I really really did enjoy their narration and I thought that they brought a certain level of humor to some really really difficult things that they had been through and it made me really really connect with them as individuals and I fully enjoyed them. The first one is Born a Crime by Trevor Noah of course I think a lot of people have read this it is excellent on audio. I would definitely recommend listening to it on audio. He is hilarious. He is a comedian as well as an activist. He's just a lot. If you've ever seen the late night show with Trevor Noah or The Daily Show, it's The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, you will understand where I'm coming from. He just brings the, so much personality and so much humor to everything that he does and it's no different with this book. Even when he's talking about tough topics like growing up as a biracial kid in South Africa where he is technically illegal. And the second one that I'm going to recommend is We're Going to Need More Wine by Gabrielle Union who reads this. Gabrielle Union has always been very interesting to me because she comes across as really mean sometimes because of the characters that she's always been forced to play which has always been like the real like mean girl role kind of. And I think that this book really gives a different perspective to who she is as a person and hearing her say some of the things that she said and talk about some of the experiences that she had gone through was really really interesting and it really made me see a, her in a completely different light. And the last one that I have is one that I have not finished reading but I had started on audio but I wanted a physical copy. This is one where you needed to follow along with the text type of situation. So it is The City We Became and this one is narrated by Robin Miles. And what's really great about this one is that it also has sound effects so it makes the story super engaging and dynamic. I would recommend listening to this one but I also would recommend following along with the physical book because N.K. Jemison writes some pretty complex worlds and listen to it on audio it's easy to get confused. But I know that Deidre from Shade Tree Reads told me that when she listened to this on audio and follow along with a book it was a really really great experience so this is one that I plan on doing that with. Alright y'all so that's it that is the audio booking 101. I hope you all have learned something. I hope that you have found some recommendations that you may like. Remember that this is not a like this is not everything that I've ever listened to but I just wanted to give you kind of some of my favorites and just a range of genre and different like age groups that are the target age so I'm hoping that everybody finds at least something that they would be interested in reading but maybe I could do a part two to this we'll see what things look like in the future all right y'all if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content from me click the subscribe button all of my links to my social media and ways to support my channel will be down in the description box below I hope everyone has a wonderful day and I'll be back with another video soon